G'day guys, uh, Wade here from Different Drop, uh, with a good mate of ours, Michael Downer, who's in town from Murdoch Hill in the Adelaide Hills. G'day mate. Wade, great to be here. Thanks bro, how are you? Mate, I'm ripper. Awesome. Um, checking out uh, Mix 2022 uh, Artisan Series Wines, which is uh, really exciting. The new Tilbury Chardonnay Fake and Pinot Noir, and the 21 Landau Syrah. Um, so... Tell me about the 22 Tilbury, mate. What's the go? Yeah, sure. So 2022, outstanding vintage in the Adelaide Hills. This wine is largely sourced from a new vineyard in Lenswood. Um, some mature vines going back to 1989 and some newer claims planted in early 2000s. Here we're looking at a really mineral-driven, sort of wet stone, um, that linear style of Chardonnay. So, um, yeah, the remaining parts of the fruit are coming from Piccadilly Valley and Lobethal, so... Continuing that lean, lean into the style from our previous vintages. Mate, I love the, the tension and freshness in this wine, hey? Like the 22 is like really on point. Yeah, well, we had really low yields in the 22, so terrible flowering conditions. Um, and this just gave us, with the cool conditions at ripening, this uh, intensity of fruit, not in sense of flavour, but in sense of sort of tensile, crystalline, mineral sort of feel to the wine. Mate, that's smoking. Beautiful, thank you. It's wrapped, wrapped around in some... You know, some functions probably about 35% new and, you know, these are just given complexing elements to the wine. Quite a bit of malo actually with the high acidity from the year. You're saying that, that it's almost, it's pretty much 100% malo, yeah, right? Yeah, well but done. The, the acid in it is just like punch, punch, yeah. punch. It's so rude. Yeah, I remember post-vintage after, you know, a few booze, boozy lunches celebrating and coming back the next day and tasting them and going, gee, these are uh, tart. So they definitely needed uh, some softening off and making them a bit more approachable. Wow, freshness, drive, like savouriness as well. Like it's not just like a glossy, sort of like really bright Chardonnay. It's got like real savoury edge to it. Mm -hmm. Looks sick, man. Beautiful, thank you. Nice. All right, Pinot. Yeah, let's do it. Chuck your shard in there. <coughs> All right. I might wait to point out quickly explain the the names of the wines if I may. Yeah. Um. So they're all named after different horse drawn carriages. My grandfather was a collector of these carriages and advocate he had some 40 of them one time and my brother and I when we created these back in 2012 that's how long we've been making this series now um yeah we wanted each one to have its own unique identity and story to tell um and so yeah on the back of the label you see a little illustration of each of, each of the carriages so you had 40 of these things the, yeah, on the farm yeah so we used to have a sheep property further out and stored a few out there a lot of them have gone into museums and um, sort of way now, but we've got a couple remaining in the barn at home. Very cool. But yeah, fake pretty people. random. I know. Very Collecting random. like horse drawn carriages. Yeah. That's a yeah. thing of the past. Yeah. <laughs> Old school. But um, yeah, so we're in the twenty two Phaeton Pinot. So this is a 50-50 blend of Piccadilly Valley and Lenswood. So historically, we've been one hundred percent Piccadilly. I really an avid uh, believer of those higher parts of the Adelaide Hills producing very. Um, beautiful expressions of Pinot, very different to what you might see in the rest of the country, um, but there is definitely a unique flair there. And Piccadilly gives this beautiful perfume, this freshness, this linear line. And then we, for the first year, bringing Lenswood Pinot in, we've seen this opulence of fruit, um, this savouriness, and this tannin profile that's coming through from the ironstone soils and the mature vines. Some of the vines go back to 1989, and they're giving this depth and power to the wine. So is this uh, one of the block? This is part of this is the block that you bought in 21? That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So 50% from that lens, lens would be now. Yeah, yeah. Mate, so I think what I love about this Pinot is that a lot of Adelaide Hills Pinot can get like a little bit heavy in style or like quite darkly fruited. Yeah. It's got so much bright red fruit to it uh, and yeah. beautiful, beautiful shape and tannin as well. Mm -hmm. So it's got like, like Pinot tannin where you actually want to see it. Yeah, I love a bit of tannin in Pinot and great to see this Vignana you know, Lenswood expressing that. Um, I just think those cooler sites, um, we pulled whole bunches back, so we're looking at purity of fruit coming through with the 22 vintage um, and showing, displaying some more of those red fruits and, um, you know, all these came in 12, 8, 13, 2% alcohol finish. So, so you're pick, um, picking them fairly early or is it just yeah, like the season was super late so it just didn't get that A combination that of both, you know, usually would aim for those numbers but there was a depth of ripeness from the vintage just with that cooler season and, in, you know, we're talking about the Chardonnay, the low yields, Pinots were even worse. Um, so that was one of the reasons why we pulled those whole bunches back as well to get that balance right. It's a beautiful wine, man. Thank you. It feels like it's going to have really great longevity as oh, well. Yeah, because yeah. it's yeah, it's got it's got structure. It's not just like a juvie bright Adelaide Hills Pinot. It's 
Mm-hmm. Kind of savoury. He's got a bit of a badass attitude. I dig it. But just, you know, inherent drinkability about it as well with that vibrancy. So, mm. um, bottle will disappear quite quickly, I think. Yeah. What do you, what, what's kind of the thumbprint of the 22 vintage, you reckon? Uh, well, the low yields, the cool conditions, you know, it was a, a wet winter and wet spring, so the vines were really well set up. But I think that low yields, but the thing is, there's an approachability about them, you know, even with the Chardonnays and the Pinots, the, you know, there's an intensity of fruit and a, a juiciness up front, but with that acid line, um, sort of sets them well up for early drinking, also long, long-lived wines too. Yeah, I, I think so many of the 22s I've seen, they've got like beautiful generosity and yeah. like upfront flavour, mm-hmm. but they, they still have like structure and tension and everything as well, so they should be long-lived. It's not like they're just like yeah. juby sort of puppy fat yeah. wines that yeah, just yeah. look really showy on release, so like, you know. Yeah, a bit of backbone. There's a lot of detail in there with the you know the various blocks, the vine age, all these different components are, are building their shape and you know direction for the wines in the future. Yeah, mate, smoky. All right, twenty one Landau. Yeah. So we jump back. Why do you give a Landau an extra year in bottle? Um, I just think an extra year in bottle for the all the Shirazes is is a good thing for the wine to come together around. 21 was an outstanding, thank you, outstanding vintage. In comparison to the 21, you know, we saw brilliant flowering conditions. So we had well-formed bunches and this required a lot of detail in the vineyard to get that balance right. So a lot of green harvesting. Uh, we've been farming our oak bank vineyard, you know, originally since 1998 uh, when it was planted. So 25 years now. And um, with the Landau Syrah, we've been making that since... 2012 from the same block so you know i know the detail of this vineyard you know very personally and you know i think we've got the balance and the operations in the vineyard you know down packed um but 21 led into these beautiful slow mild conditions for for ripening it was a you know lovely indian summer so all these later varieties have and and one i think one of the key things with soraya needs good sunshine to build tannin and 21's has got um, some really nice fine tannin structure to it. Because Shiraz doesn't do that well in heat, hey? It's like it's a bit of a silk. Yeah, absolutely. It can, so, bag, it can bag out. So, um, yeah, getting the picking right, the balance in the vineyard, um, and 21 just delivered it all together. Holy shit, dude. That is unreal. Very classic, you know, cool climate expression of Syrah. So lots of black pepper in 21 vintage, a bit of black olive taffeta character. That's a distinct character we see. That's the real signature of your of your Shiraz block, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. like, like, because there's probably half a dozen other winemakers who you sell a little bit of fruit to occasionally. Yeah, yeah spread the love. And man, I can like pick your vineyard like straight away pretty much. It'd be like, because cool. you see that black olive character. I'm yeah. like, fuck, I reckon that's mixed fruit. Here you go. And it looks unreal. That is a smoking vintage yeah, of that wine, dude. All right, the density of fruit to it. Mm-hmm. Like, I think in a cooler year, I was expecting maybe it would be like a little bit greener or a little bit spicier, a little mm-hmm. bit like leaner. Mm-hmm. It's actually insanely concentrated and like crazy plushness to it. But yeah, it's still kept all that spice. Yeah, there's definitely a ripeness to, to the fruit in 21, um, you know, from that milder conditions, but there's still plenty of sunshine. Um, and of course, we get cold nights, so it keeps, you know, acid balance really good. Um, and, you know, because of the year, we're enabled to play with a little bit more whole wine, so on average, that might be 35, 40%. Um, and that helps bring different elements, different spice, bit of structure to the wine. But hopefully, you know, with all these wines across the theme, is, you know, I kind of like this series to be sort of a adventurous, um, linear, structured expression. And then when you go into a top level, the galactic fleet, you know, they're a little bit more polished and a little bit more refined and a little bit more generosity of, and drive of fruit. Yeah. So these are, you know, fun, playful, drinkable wines, but, you know, also serious and complex at the same time. No, I think they're just like absolute sweet spot, modern Adelaide Hills wines, right? Like they've got freshness, they got drinkability, they're classy, they're sexy, not no, unlike no. yourself. <laughs> Mate, there's just a, it's a, it's a smoking little trio. Nice um, absolutely love these wines. Uh, these uh, new releases only got here pretty recently. It was uh, within the last couple of weeks, I think mm-hmm. we got these in, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, we never have much of them. They always sell out pretty quickly each year. So uh, if you want to check out sort of the best, you know, modern examples of the Adelaide Hills at the moment, I reckon you can't do much better than what Mickey's doing at Murdoch Hill. So um, go and check them out, guys. These wines are absolutely cracking. Cheers.